Well, good hump day afternoon, friends. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great day. I am doing fantastic. I got beat down by Philly 500 and, of course, Dan Salio on our regular Wednesday afternoon thing, which turned into a discussion about the Dallas Cowboys and Eagles to now getting tag team by Philly 500 and Dan Quinn, but that's okay. I'm going to bide my time, bide my time and we're going to see what we're going to see. And in the end, you know, I'm going to have the last laugh at this thing. You know, I'm, it's, it's okay. It's okay. We going to be good. Anyway, we have everybody and their sister who are talking about, the Dak Prescott contract, you know, you got Joy Taylor and I didn't even know it, man. You know, it's crazy that, um, Dak attack. Oh my God. Dak attack. That brother brings this shit strong. He brings it strong to the mic. Um, I didn't know Joy Taylor had started a podcast or excuse me, a YouTube channel. And everybody's coming to YouTube because, you know, YouTube's easy. YouTube is easy. Any fool in his mom's basement, you know, wearing his wife's panties can do YouTube. It's easy to be successful. Um, but Dak Attack was talking about her channel, and it's not doing that good. I'm kind of surprised. You know, I'm, I'm surprised. But definitely check out the video there because, man, he ain't playing. Dak Attack ain't playing. Um, he literally goes in on her and she was, uh, the, one of the videos he was talking about was her basically asking, you know, putting it into relationship static category with the Cowboys and Dak Prescott. It's like, you know, what, what are we, you know, as far as relationship goes. And so many people are like, the Cowboys ain't going to pay him. They're going to blow the thing up and they're not going to blow this thing up. Let's be he clear here. The last thing Jerry Jones wants is a couple of years of not winning at all and having no hope and starting to rebuild because he likes seeing the fans in the stands and he likes people talking about them. And you're not getting that same love if you know you're going to be 5-11 and 11 like we were three years in a row. And that's my case for the reason why they won't blow it up. Whether you like Dak or don't like Dak, Dak has kept that team relevant and on the tip of everybody's tongue, or maybe as my man Dag Attack said, somebody wishes he was on the tip of her tongue. But be that as it may, we have a take here from Rich Eisen and Albert Breer um, about the contract situation. And I, I, I want to listen to it as well with you guys. Floating. <laughs> Justin Jefferson is going to at some point sign the 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 you want to talk about making money just sitting on your hands. It's CD yes, Lamb. We Lamb. all know mm -hmm. that even if the Cowboys are taking the approach of Jerry Jones's all in approach for everybody, he wants to see more what leaves on the tree or whatever he wants yeah. to do before he pitches as a halfback, <laughs> before he hits the out of bounds line and what, right. whatever he's saying in terms of his uh, analogies, we all know. That when it comes down to it, CeeDee Lamb and Micah Parsons are going to be paid, have to be paid. There is no way yeah. they're going to let both of these guys go, either one of these guys go. Dak's a totally different story, to be honest with you, I think. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, quarterback, they could go back and get another quarterback somehow. I think Dak's definitely going to stay, too. But that's the one that could be an open question. Well, we all know these guys have to be extended somehow, right? I mean, and it's well, some, let me ask you this. When, let me, before we jump in on the extension, let me ask you this. Sure. Does it make sense to you that maybe the Cowboys are right now with Dak Prescott where the Rams were with Jared Goff in 2020? Which is essentially like, what? Like you've, you've are hit, we ever going to get there? Uh, they're, 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 asking, they're asking the bigger, are we ever going to get there with this guy question? And I'm not saying like that that means offloading him because – the Rams obviously had a golden opportunity come in front of them to get Matthew Stafford and Jared Goff's still a really good quarterback. We've seen that in Detroit. Yes. But can you see where Dallas might right now be with Dak Prescott where oh, the absolutely. Rams were with Jared Goff? Absolutely. And uh, that's that's why I'm saying I can totally see a future for yeah. Dallas without Dak, certainly in the way wow. that his contract is 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 laid out right now. He has all the leverage 
Yep. So he can figure out what he wants to do. And he's already even publicly saying, well, you know what? I mean, I'm, I mean, I, I want to be here, but, you know, if I'm if I'm somewhere else, that's, you know, uh, he made it seem like he, he can handle that. We all know CeeDee Lamb's going nowhere. And we know right. Micah Parsons is going nowhere. So why not sign him now before the price for both goes through the roof? I don't, I don't, I don't, that yeah. I don't get. And, and that, that, that's the one thing that never makes sense to me. Like, I think the Eagles are always really smart Correct. with this. Like, if you look at the way the Eagles have attacked these situations over the last few years, um, you know, they, when they, when they signed Jalen Hurts, it was at the beginning of the off season before Joe Burrow and Justin Herbert um, and Lamar Jackson got their deals. Right. And then you see this offseason, what they do, they signed Devontae Smith before, you know, like the receiver contracts came. And I, you just see it time and again, you know, the owner keeps the money in his pocket for an extra few months. And what do you know, mm -hmm. you know, February and March turns into July and August. Now all of a sudden the price is through the roof, mm -hmm. you know? And so we already have them working with Micah Parsons off of what Nick Bosa got last year. So that market already exploded. Um, and is up above 34 million per. And now you got CD Lamb in a market that was at 25 million, could be at 35 or 40 by the time Justin Jefferson. <laughs> and you know you're going right. to keep him. I mean, yeah. And, and it's not like Justin Jefferson is not going to get paid. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, like, you, so, you have to beat the Vikings to that punch. Right. You must. I mean, you right. would think. But Jerry, yeah. Jerry has said, like, he's on his own timetable and bless him. I mean, who tells him how to do business? He's clearly insanely successful mm -hmm. at business. I, I get it. But I yeah. just don't. Um, so, um, uh, will this happen? So do you think, think before the season? Do you think it happens? I think the they, I think they do happen before the season. Okay. But again, the timing of it, like whether that happens June first or August fifteenth, like right. that could be a big difference. Like based on you know the contracts we get between now and then, you know, and I, like look, like there are a couple of under the radar ones that I think could affect the market at different positions mm -hmm. too, where um, you know. Like, could Matthew Stafford ask for, you know, more and more guarantees, you know, and in, sure. in, in, with the Rams? Could Christian McCaffrey ask for more with the Niners? Like, I think the market's going to be affected over the next th two, three months in a lot of different ways. And so, you know, I think whether you do these deals now or later, they're going to have to get done. And like we've just well, like we just said, like you're going to have it's going to cost you money if you wait. Um, That's the truth. I, I just think part of where they are, the psychology of where the Cowboys are right now, like to me, is like, it's about, is this the group that we can win a championship with? And they've taken a bunch of cracks at it with this group. And now you've seen some of the guys that were part of that group, your Leighton Van Der Esch's, your Tyron Smith's that are gone now. Mm -hmm. And um, Tony Pollard, Ezekiel Elliott, guys who've been offloaded over the last couple of years. And I do Ezekiel's think a part bad. of it is, okay so what is our car our core going forward and how do we want to build that core and reward that core and set ourselves up for the next five years and you know i i think mike mccarthy is a part of that equation too like there are assistant coaches there that are going into contract years mm -hmm. you know like so like there's just like a lot of open questions about where they are in 2025 and beyond and i think that that part of it is probably slowing the negotiations on some of these guys and 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 like you said rich that's never a good tactic to wait i don't think you know so what i mean it I just don't. it just it's isn't. never a good tactic i mean to wait. again like people ooh and ah over the like a lot of the things the eagles have done right there in the nfc east and their division a lot of it's just common sense you know to me like signing Devonte smith at the start of the off season like you knew you wanted to keep him that's just, it just pay him now and then you won't be you know, paying an extra five to ten million dollars in August for him. I'm you know, with you. it's I'm so with you. simple I'm... stuff like that. And yeah, I mean, like I, I wish there was a better explanation for some of those things in Dallas. I just, That's I'm just not sure. There that is no is. Catch the Rich Eisen show every single day Thank on the. You. Thank you, Rich. There is no explanation for what they're doing. It makes no sense whatsoever. But you know, they basically will be waiting till training camp to get it done when it costs more money. I guess to steal some more of the headlines. You know, maybe. That's what it's really all about. I, I wish I could tell you what they are doing. But, you know, then again, it might be that tomorrow we wake up and the deals, one of these deals are done and it breaks the Internet. I don't know. Maybe they're waiting for a slow news cycle day to get it squared away. I don't know. But we'll do what we do. Just keep on waiting. I'm Mark Holmes, and I appreciate you guys. Peace out.